What is going on everybody? Well, I am down here in the Big Easy New Orleans for the Overlook Film Festival and tonight was the closing film Abigail, the newest vampire flick by Radio Silence, the people that gave us Ready or Not, as well as the last two Scream flicks. This is one of my most anticipated films of the year because I absolutely love vampire movies. You guys know that. The Lost Boys, uh, Fright Night, Near Dark, From Dust Till Dawn. These are among my favorites of all time, and I've been very excited about seeing the vampire subgenre kind of get a bit of a resurgence the last couple of years. And so this was probably my most anticipated film of this festival, certainly the one that got me to make the drive over here. And the basic plot of this movie is that you have a group of thieves that are commissioned to kidnap this little girl and hold her into this uh, mansion, almost like a bunker, waiting for the ransom to be paid by her father. And very quickly, the people that are locked in this building with the little girl find out that she's actually a vampire and it's all a trap. So did Abigail deliver? Is this another notch into the resurgence of vampire films? Is this Radio Silence's best film yet? Yes, yes, and fuck yes. Starting off with the positives, this is just my type of film. I love vampire flicks, and the ones that I enjoy the most, if you look at my favorites, are the ones that certainly have that balance of fun, like The Lost Boys and From Dust Till Dawn. And in fact, I got to interview very briefly the guys at Radio Silence outside of the theater before we went in, and my question to them was what their favorite vampire flicks were and how it influenced Abigail. I was wondering what your favorite vampire flicks are and how they influenced your approach to Abigail. Friday night. Friday there night. you go. Uh, Lost Boys. Lost Boys. That's my um, two favorites. You guys are near awesome. Near Dark. Let the right one in. Mm -hmm. The original the, Dracula. From Dusk Till Dawn. <laughs> we'll name them all. all <laughs> was there one in particular that influenced <clears throat> Abigail the most? I think Lost Boys Lost is probably... Lost Boys is the one that we kept returning to. Yeah, Just the right. tone, the so fun I'm of it. I love the movie then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. And their answers absolutely got me excited for what this is. And when you see the movie, they're dead on. Like, it's just one of those types of vampire flicks where you get really fun characters. You got a nice, sharp sense of humor. You got the over-the-top gore and the blood. And for as intense as the horror sequences get and for as gnarly as the vampire action is in here, it never loses its sense of fun. And it's such a hard balance to strike, especially in modern horror filmmaking, to not go too far with the humor, to not break the tension too much, to not lean too far into a silly tone. They nailed it in here as far as balancing everything that I want and what I assume most of you want from a vampire flick like this. One of the best things that it's got going for it is the cast and the characters here. This is one of those instances where you have an ensemble of a lot of recognizable actors, some that you've been seeing do films for quite a while, some a little bit more of a newer name like Melissa Barrera, and they all work so well together and they all have this really nice balance back and forth humor and the, this antagonistic tone towards each other and it sets up a cast of characters to where basically everybody is a shitty person for one reason or another but you can't help but like every single one of them and that's something that makes the vampire action and the horror side of it so much more easy to invest yourself in because there's nobody here that you like want to see get wasted even though they're shitty people you're like yeah I really like them though so I don't know, maybe they'll be the one that survives at the end. Melissa Barrera is really good as Joey. I enjoy her quite a bit in the two screen films that she's been in. I think she's even better here, and I really look forward to seeing her career continue to blossom. You've got like Angus Cloud in here, who unfortunately passed away, and I just got introduced to him last year with Your Lucky Day. He's pretty much a scene stealer in this, just such a sharp wit with his like brand of sense of humor and the, the attitude and the cadence of his voice, where he could just say something totally normal and it comes across funny. You got Kevin Durand in here who's been working for a long time and is a super recognizable character actor and he is basically the big muscle dumb guy and they find so many different ways to pay that off throughout the film and sometimes it's just like a throwaway line happening in the background and the whole theater would erupt with laughter. You got Giancarlo Esposito in a small role here. Even Dan Stevens, who, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of Godzilla Kong, but he was basically the best part of that movie. And then Cuckoo, one of the opening, the opening film of the festival he's great in. This is like the year that's gonna cement this guy as an actor to keep your eye on. He is so charismatic and so charming. And even when he's like a shitbag character like this, he does it in a way that like endears you to him and you want to see more of his character. And if we're gonna talk about performances, we gotta talk about Abigail herself and you've got Got Alicia Weir here in the role and I've never seen her before this might be her first role as a matter of fact and she's somebody who I'm gonna definitely keep my eye on because she 
completely anchors this movie as Abigail. You've got scenes where she's playing the up upset, scared little girl who's like seemingly innocent before that they know that she's a monster and she nails that. Whenever the mask slips and now she is the villainous monster that they're all running away from, she is terrifying. She's got a sharp wit and a sharp sense of humor herself. And all throughout the movie, she kind of switches her tone and her approach and the, the, the hierarchy of who really is holding the power and who is in charge of the situation changes a number of times throughout the movie and her her tone and approach changes to fit all of that and she was just great from start to finish so she's somebody that as great as everybody else is she was the find that radio silence need to really pat themselves on the back for and she needs to pat herself on the back too because she was just fucking awesome joey yeah I'm sorry about what's gonna happen to you. I also really liked how this movie was able to kind of, not really change genres, but it changes focus and changes tone a little bit throughout the film, where it starts very much as a typical heist movie, hostage movie, and in fact, if you can get somebody to go and see this with you that has not seen the trailers and doesn't know the that true origin, the true nature of Abigail, it's gonna be a really nice little turn whenever that's revealed because the movie is specifically just that hostage situation for the first act. Then it becomes this hunt movie where they're looking in the shadows and they know that something is taking them out one by one. And then when everything is fully revealed, it just goes batshit bonkers over and over again as character hierarchy changes and motivations change and you start to explore some of that vampire lore, which is one of my favorite aspects to see in a new take on on vampires is which of the old school rules are going to work and which of them are not going to work and be turned on their head. That was a really interesting thing that they did here with some of the classic ways that you're able to hurt or kill a vampire in some ways which uh, absolutely fail in Abigail. And even the way that they shift around how it works when somebody is bit by a vampire. I'm not going to elaborate any further than that, but really liked the direction that they took that side of the lore. There's also some really solid fight choreography and action choreography here. This is a big mansion, but a lot of the rooms that these action sequences take place in are very tight rooms, and they're able to get a lot of things shot, a lot of things going on. Of course, Abigail is a ballerina, so some of the more action-centric sequences deal with her in the middle of like a dance number and almost using dance as a, a, f a version of fight or like a style of fight for her and then you got two three other characters trying to jump in on her so the way that they utilize the camera work the way they utilize the setting the choreography the makeup effects when it comes to people being covered in blood it's a horror movie and it's got some solid humor but there's really good action in there too there's just everything in this movie. Now I've thought this over for a couple of hours now trying to think if there's anything genuinely negative about the experience that I had with Abigail and this is one of those rare times where I really don't have anything negative to say about it. It delivered everything that I wanted from this movie and quite a bit that I didn't even know that I wanted from this movie. But there are a couple of things that if they had just tweaked it slightly, I would have enjoyed this movie even more than I did. So moving on to the mixed, one thing about me being a slasher fan, I like a lot of variety in my kills. I like a lot of variety in my gore. And if you go into this movie expecting that, you're not quite going to get it. I think that it does very nice with what it does with the gore and with the amount of blood that we get, but there's kind of a signature kill Kill that Radio Silence has really implemented quite a bit in their films up to this point. That is a recurring thing that happens in this movie. It's played for laughs. It got a lot of laughs in the theaters, but if they had just taken one or two of those opportunities to do something even more creative, that probably would have worked for me even better than what we got here. And the only other thing that they could have done is that there's quite a bit of chatter about an impending arrival of a certain character in this movie throughout the first couple of acts. And to me, it set up a bit of a false expectation that they were going to pay that off big by the end of the film. They do pay it off, but I guess I was expecting more from that. So I don't want to talk too much more about that. I don't want to get into spoiler detail. If you see the movie when it drops in theaters, you'll probably understand what I'm talking about and you can come back and discuss it then but nothing that affected my experience with the movie whatsoever but if they had done just something a little different with it I would have loved it even more. But overall, guys, this is definitely the film that I have loved the most in this festival. This is the most fun that I have had in the theater so far in 2024. This is the most fun that I've had with a vampire film in quite a long time. And there have been some really good ones here over the last couple of years. This gave me everything that I wanted 
and more. And this is definitely going to be a movie that just works its way into my regular rotation of classic vampire flicks. And I do genuinely think this is Radio Silence's best film yet. So get excited to check this out when it comes out in theaters. You don't have to wait too long and then come back and let me know what you thought about it. That's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed that, click over here for all of my 2024 new release reviews. I'm also going to put a playlist up here of a vampire and werewolf ranking video that we did last year called 31 on 31 Creatures of the Night. Please like, share, and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss everything in the future. And as always, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.